Welcome back, Fragrance Fiend here today, blindly ranking my top five from the Floris Discovery Kit, specifically the German Street one, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've only recently discovered Floris after purchasing Mulberry Fig, and thought I'd buy a Discovery Kit to see what else the brand has going for them. I'm not going to go into full detail reviewing each one of these scents, I'm simply going to pick out my top five based on a first impression. So I'll start with number 89, the description is, Orange and Bergamot blended with lavender and neroli give this scent its classical cologne aspect. And this is the oldest out of the lot, which came out in 1951. Straight off the bat, that's identical to Boada Portugal by Creed, and that came out in 1987. I do appreciate the scent for what it is, but it's probably going to be number 5 for me. It's something I'm quite familiar with already, and it's really not within my age range. You can tell it's definitely heavily scented around the woods and that lavender. So even without having smelt the other ones, I'm going to rule this one out and say it's number 5. Moving along to Santal, I don't expect really too much from this, I'm just expecting a bit of a classic woody scent. This one came out in 2002, and the description for this one is warm, spiced, citrus notes woven with essential aromatic heart of lavender leading into a complex woody oriental base. To be honest, that's kind of how I'd describe the last one as well, but let's see how we go. I'm actually liking this a lot more than number 89, and it definitely smells a little more modern as well. I like it, but I don't love it, so I'll wait a bit to see where it sits on my list. Next up we have Elite, which came out in 1980, and as follows, woody notes of patchouli and vetiver are enlivened with a cool citrus twist of bergamot, grapefruit, and lemon, punctuated in a great interplay with the green resinous notes. This one definitely sounds a little more interesting. I'm really liking this one actually, I get a bit of a minty tonality out of it, possibly some coriander or spices as well. You definitely get that citrus and freshness in the opening, so out of what I've smelt so far, I'd definitely pay the money for this one. Mildly reminiscent of Viking actually. So after looking up the full note breakdown, it's got pettigrain in it, which I love, which is what's obviously drawing me to this scent. Next up we have JF, released in 1992, which has a burst of bergamot, lemon, lime, and mandarin, led to juniper berry, cypress, and pettigrain at the heart, giving the fragrance its unmistakable masculine character. Gonna take a bit of a guess, but I think I'm actually going to like this more than the last one. This one's a lot more lighter, it doesn't have much character to it, definitely more lemony. This one is kind of sitting in the middle for me as well. And lastly, named after the collection, we have German Street, which is the latest in the lot, which came out in 2015. As the initial burst of citrus and green notes has been blended with the theme of vetiver, vetiver runs throughout the fragrance and is accompanied by juniper and a twist of coriander. So far they've all been pretty old-fashioned masculine scents, nothing like Mulberry Fig, which is a lot more modern, so let's give it a shot. It's definitely vetiver overload and that violet is just too much for my liking. I don't know what it is, but with a violet it just pierces my nose and gives me somewhat of a headache. And considering they're all part of the masculine collection, this is heavily feminine for me. So I'm actually going to take back what I said earlier about number 89 because German Street isn't doing it for me. So German Street comes in at number 5, number 89 comes in at number 4, and to me Elite doesn't really separate itself too much from number 89, so I'm going to put that at number 3. This however seems a little more accessible than number 89 even though they've got that heavy woods and lavender going on, leaving Santal and JF between number 1 and 2. So I'm going to give these two the skin test with JF on my left hand and Santal on my right hand and see where we go from there. So now to give you the full note breakdown of JF which is bergamot, lime, lemon, coriander, orange, clary sage and wormwood in the top, with cypress, jasmine, pettigrain and juniper berries in the heart, with a base of musk, oak moss, cedar and ambergris. The no breakdown for Santal is cardamom, pepper, bergamot, grass, and lemon in the top with lavender, nutmeg, and clove in the heart, sandalwood, vanilla, cedar, olibanum, amber, musk, and vetiver in the base. On paper, Santal smelled incredible, but on my hand, it literally smells like Play-Doh. This is not actually what I was expecting from Santal at all. Potentially, the natural ingredients from it may have expired, because that doesn't smell anything like the other florist fragrances. That being said, it's still a really nice scent, but I don't see the performance on this one going too far. And that leaves JF as the obvious winner. The citruses smell amazing in the opening, just really invigorating, fresh. And I can't wait till summer comes around because I'm probably going to grab a full bottle. And as I mentioned earlier, I really liked Pettigrain, which is coming out in the heart now. The jasmine and florals are really mild, but it definitely gives the fragrance a bit more depth. And lastly, that combination of cedarwood and oak moss is just really warm, green, kind of creamy. Then the musk and ambergris are just the icing on the cake for it. It appears that Frey Grandica uses seem to compare it to Green Irish Tweed and Davidoff Cool Water, but I don't smell that at all. The opening's mildly reminiscent of Tom Ford's brand new Azura Lime, but having worn that a bit is quite screechy on my skin, and I much prefer this. So overall, a really interesting collection. I'm quite glad I didn't go out of my way to blind buy any of them. This was definitely the type of florist I was expecting, and their appreciation for classic perfumery. I'd still have to get my nose eventually on Honey Oud, which does sound quite nice, but for now I'm just going to enjoy my Mulberry Fig. And if you'd like to see me do a full review on J or let me know in the comments below, and I may consider purchasing that one. But for now, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.